All right. If you've had digital, you've probably already had some of these numbering systems and codes. Um, in here, we look at really just the parts that we need. Uh, so we're going to look at binary. Uh, we're going to look at octal, but not a lot. And we're going to look at hexadecimal. Um, we're going to, there are a few things about gray code that you need to know. Um, so, so basically these are the numbering systems and codes that we're going to be talking about. And I believe this probably starts on your page 49 or 50. Okay. Okay, so the we're going to look at the difference between digital and analog. Okay. We're going to look at numbering systems. We're going to look at the binary numbering system, um, binary to decimal conversions. Um, binary and hex math we're not going to do a lot of. I'm going to show you so, maybe an introduction to it. Uh, we've removed that because when you get to PLC2, he reteaches you how to do the math. So I don't teach it in this class anymore because we don't do math in here. Okay. So you won't have to do any binary math or hex math. I'll do it so that you've at least seen it, but you don't have to know how to do it. You just have to know how to do the conversions, and that's enough math for now. Okay. Um, we're going to look at the octal numbering system. Uh, we're going to look at BCD. It's a code. It's called binary coded decimal. We're going to look at gray code, and we're going to look at ASCII. And I'll explain what those are as we go to. All right. Digital is basically on or off. Okay, so I have a voltage, and that voltage I'm going to say is 5 volts. If I have 5 volts, it's on. If I have no volts, it's off. This light is on, or this light is on, this light is off. There is no gray area in between, okay? A normal switch is very similar to a digital signal, okay? in that I have an on and an off. A lot of dining rooms have dimmer switches, right? So now I can go between completely off and completely on. I've got variations in between. Y'all with me? That would be more like an analog signal because I have different degrees of on. I'm not just on or off. I have off and on a little, on sort of, on a lot, okay? So I, I've got different degrees of on and off, and that is analog. So that's continually varying from full off to full on. Um, on and off, I told you, is like that back there. Uh, there are a lot of things that are on or off. Um, some of the things that are analog would be like temperature. What is on for a temperature? What is it? I mean, you know, all, anything that is that we have is a temperature, right? Now, we can say we're going from freezing to hot, but what's hot? It varies. There you go. It, what's hot for me might not be the same as it is for you, right? So everything is a little bit, is a gray area, okay? Um, pressure. How much pressure can you stand? Well, it's going to be different for you than it is for me, okay? Uh, same thing with velocity. How fast is fast? I guess that depends on if you're going down 65 or if you're on the Audubon, right? So, so basically it varies. And I'm not sure what I have here for 
see figure one one because this is not even chapter one. I think this is what I mean. Uh, this is basically two watches. One's digital, one's analog. Okay. On the digital clock on the D over there, if it's not 832, what's the next number? 833. Can I have 832 and a half? Not that it shows on the screen, right? It just changes from one minute to the next. You with me? So that's digital. Now this guy over here has a second hand and that thing's always moving. So as it's moving and these arms are not always on a number. You with me? So we can have variations and this <clears throat> this is a varying signal. This is an analog signal. This is a digital signal. It's either on or it's off. There is no in between. Notice a straight line. Everybody okay? Okay. <clears throat> now we are about to look at how to convert between uh, binary numbers. Binary is a system that is either on or off. It is a digital system. <clears throat> the numbering system we use now is decimal. Decimal is a base 10 numbering system. That means that I have 10 digits in the system. 10 is not one of them. It's 0 to 9. So the only thing that counts are the one digits before I carry, have a carry. Everybody with me? Binary, which we're fixing to look at how to convert some of these, <clears throat> by means 2. So binary is a base 2 numbering system. The only two numbers I have in binary are 0 and 1. Zero means it's off, and one means it's on. Um, if you've ever looked at the back of your computer, there's a switch back there on a lot of them on the power supply, and there's a zero and a one. That is binary for off and on. I had somebody say, well, I know what off is, but what's I? That's not I. That's one and zero. Okay, that's on and off. All right. Well, I just hit the blackout. Sorry. All right. <clears throat> uh, octal, y'all know what an octopus has, right? Four legs, I mean eight legs. So this is octal is a base eight. So... We have numbers 0 to 7. And hexadecimal is a base 16. So in a base 16 numbering system, we have 0 to 15 as our numbers, except we can't have but one digit. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 become A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, you'll get some in just a few minutes because we're going to convert every one of them. I just want to kind of cover what they are right at the moment. What? We'll get to them. You don't have to write it down right now. All right. We'll, we'll get to them shortly. It's no big deal. Base 10 numbering system, here it is, 0 to 9. Every one of these can be placed in a weighted column, and it becomes that weight, right? So if I have nine zero, if I have nine zero, zero is in the ones column, right? Nine is in the what column? Tens. So this is actually 9 times 10, which is 90, plus no ones. Y'all with me? I'm doing this on purpose. I, kn I know that 
uh, decimal is something you're used to, but I'm doing it because you need to see it and see something you understand so that when we get to something you don't, it'll make more sense. Everybody okay? All right. Uh, this would be your weighted columns, and notice that you told me this was 10. What is 10 raised to the first power? 10. What's 10 raised to 0? 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Okay. What about 10 squared? 100. So this would be the hundreds place. 10 cubed. Thousands place. Ten to the fourth power is ten thousandths place. Everybody okay? <clears throat> These are the base numbers. Ten raised to the zero power. Ten raised to the first power. So the ten is the base number. So when we get to binary, now we've got a base two. So all of our numbers are 0 or 1. So we either turn a column on or we turn it off. We're going to raise each one of these by the same ones we did just a minute ago. But now our base number has changed. So what is 2 raised to the 0 power? 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. What's 2 to the first power? 2. What's 2 squared? Okay, I'm hearing the same people answer now. Y'all okay? The rest of you okay? What's 2 cubed? It'll be 8. What's 2 to the 4th power? Do y'all notice a pattern here? 1, 2, double that, 4, double that, 8, double that, 16. What's double 16? What's double 32? What's double 64? What's, what's uh, 2 to the 8th power? 256. And I can keep going. 512, 1024, 2048. Everybody okay? All right. So notice I've, I've put some 1s and zeros down in here. Okay. So let's figure out what this number is. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, I got a, a 1 in 2 to the 3rd. Is that what you mean? Right there? Yeah. All right. So... What is 2 to the 3rd? It's 8, right? See, up above it, we wrote it. Okay, so it's 8. So all you got to do is 8 times 1 is 8. In binary, it's either on or off. So you're either going to have it or you're not. So there is no, you don't really have to multiply. And I'll show you how to figure out this whole number here as we're going. Okay. All right, so... But yes, you are correct. All right, so so notice I've got ones and zeros in, underneath this. That is my binary number. So my binary number is one zero zero one 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 zero one zero. Okay. Yeah, because how many how many places how many digits do I have in binary? Two, what are they? One and zero. So I can't have twos in there at all. So that's just the weights of my columns. Like uh, the hundreds place in, in decimal. You might have a hundreds place, but you hundred is not a single digit number. You understand? I was it's given. Oh, okay. I I gave you one zero zero one 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 zero one zero. I just put it up here. I mean it, it came with it that way. This is not something you would figure out yet. Okay? No, this is given. We're gonna figure out what this number is in decimal. 
Okay, so we're going to take this binary number that's given, and we're going to determine what it is in decimal. Okay, so let's start over here at the largest column that I have on the screen. So this first one is in the what column? 256. Y'all can y'all can speak. I won't slap you. It's in the 256, right? We don't have hundreds here. So it's in the 256 column, right? <clears throat> so we are going to, and it's on, right? Because I got a one. Everybody with me? Yep. All right. So I have 256. So this number is at least 256. You with me? Okay. The 128 column, do I have anything? It's turned off, so there's nothing. 64 column, nothing. It's turned off. 32, it is on, so now I'm going to add 32. Y'all with me so far? Okay. All right, so we've gotten to 32. What about the 16? Do I have any 16s? Yes. I guess we could play this like Go Fish. Do I have any 16s? Okay. I have a 16. I'm trying to make sure y'all are awake. All right, so now I'm going to add 16. All right, do I have any 8s? Yep. So I'm going to add 8. I may run out of space. Do I have any 4s? Nope. Do I have any 2s? Yep. Do I have any 1s? No. All right, so there's my numbers I'm going to add. So I'm going to add 256, 32, 16, 8, and 2. 314. Okay, I'm going to check you. It ain't no point. Now I know you're wrong. All right, so the answer to this, this binary number right here, equals 314 in decimal. And by the way, if I were actually writing this number, I would put a little 2 down there below it so that you would know that that's a binary number. So in decimal numbers, that'll be 314. What? Okay. All right, so everybody good? I worked it out on the screen for you, too. Uh, <clears throat> if you're going to convert a decimal number into binary, uh, I actually had a a student that that showed me this method. Can I borrow your notebook? Okay, uh, on your notebook, notice it's got the red line up here, okay, and then it's got columns down for you. If you just turn your paper sideways, you can start a column with 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 on a cross and use these lines as a divider. And it makes it much easier when you start what we're fixing to do. Okay, that's all I wanted was just to... You just happen to be sitting on the inside of that aisle. It's easy to grab your stuff, so sorry. All right. So what we're going to do when we convert from decimal back to binary is we're going to take the decimal number, and we are going to figure out what the largest column weight is that I can subtract out. Okay, and I'm going to subtract it out of the, put a 1, subtract it out of the whole number. Okay, whatever's left, then I'm going to figure out the largest column weight I can take out of that, what's left. Subtract it out, and I'm going to keep going like that until I'm finished. So, when I'm finished, I'll replace all the empty spots with zeros. So, let's, this is one I've actually worked out on the board and I, I apologize ahead of time because the thing got so small. 
that it ran my 8 and my 4 down here. This column is 2048, and this column is 1024, not 1024. It's 1024, okay? So, so this is 2048, and this one is 1024. Okay. All right. So with a number like 1658, that's my original number, okay? I went ahead and did my columns out until I got to a number larger than 1658. That number's 2048, right? So now I know I've covered everything that I need. Y'all with me? All right. So I can't subtract out 2048 because I can't have negative numbers, okay? So the first one I can subtract out is 1024. Everybody okay? 1024 subtracts from 1658 and still leaves you a whole number. All right? So that leaves me 634. Everybody okay with that? Can you subtract out the 512? You can. And that leaves you 10, I mean, leaves you 122. Everybody okay? Can I subtract out of 256? Can I subtract out of 128? Can I subtract out of 64? Yes. I can subtract out of 64 and it leaves me 58. I'm not sure why that dropped down like that, but 58. So can I subtract out of 32? And now I have 26. Can I subtract out of 16? Can I subtract out of 8? Can I subtract out of 4? No. I can subtract out of 2, and can I subtract out of 1? No, I don't have anything left. So now, where I have spaces, I'm going to come back and add zeros. Now, what you may want to do while you're doing this is, okay, put a circle in. I can't subtract out of 256. So just put your zero. That might keep you from losing your place if you're working, but you can do it either way. This was the way the book suggested, so I just left it alone. All right, so now we put all zeros in here. Now, this is our binary number. So our binary number is, one one zero zero one 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 zero one zero. So that is our binary number for sixteen fifty eight. Wasn't that the number we started with? Simple enough? Yes, sir. Yeah, I could have. But the reason I I'm a, sorry. Uh, the question was, I could have stopped at 1024 instead of going to 2048 when I was doing the columns originally. Yes, I could have, but I went on to 2048 to make sure that there was nothing past that <clears throat> that I could have subtracted out. So, yeah, but you could have. There's no point in having the 2048 here. You know, it's like uh, if you have 90... Uh, or let's say 96, 96 is your number in, in decimal. You write down 96, but you don't write it down 0, 096, do you? So it's basically the same thing. So I could have stopped. I just did it as a precaution to make sure I'd covered everything. <clears throat> okay. Binary, the reason we use binary is because binary is easier to transfer using electric signals, electrical signals. I can charge something or I can discharge something, and that's a one or a zero, okay? It would be harder for me to transfer two volts down a wire and not lose anything if I were using a, an analog signal, 
Yeah, does that make sense? So if I send two volts, it might get there as 1.5 if I have any drop in voltage whatsoever. So this way it sees it as a one or a zero, much easier to transfer electrical signals. Uh, it's also easy to store. <laughs> I charge a capacitor. I have a one. So it's really easy to store. And it's easier, easy to process. So if I have a voltage, it's a one. If I have nothing, it's a zero. Fairly simple. Okay. Unfortunately, there is a disadvantage. It has to have a lot of circuitry. Because to get a one, I can't send everything. I've got to either charge this one and then discharge the next one, then charge the next one. And, you know, I might have three discharges in a row. So going back to our number, this would be a charge and a charge and a discharge and a discharge and a charge and charge and charge and charge. So I'd need a capacitor for every one of these numbers. So it it could be expensive circuitry wise. Uh, with one single light, I can get a bunch of variations if I can have shades of gray. Are y'all with me? So here's my 10 combinations with shades of gray going up until, until we get to white. Okay. Um, with, with binary, I have four lights, and this gets me 10 combinations. Okay. But I have to have all four lights to get that combination of 10. Y'all with me? Because I can only turn them on or off. And so I can turn them on and off and eventually get to 10. So all of them off would be zero. If I just turn on this one, if I just turn on this one, then I get one. If I just turn on the second one, I get two. If I turn on both of these, now that's three. Okay, why are you not letting me do? There we go. I turn on both of those, now I have three. If I just turn on the, the third one right here, if I turn it on by itself, that's the fourth combination, right? This one and the last one over here, the first one I turned on, would be five. This one and the one next to it would be six. This one, this one, and this one, would all three of the end ones would be seven. The one on the end down here by itself would be the eighth combination. Nine would be the two ends, and ten would be this one and this one. Now I could also I could get up to fifteen combinations with these four lights, but I have to have four lights to even get to ten. So, so are y'all okay? We'll look at those combinations shortly. You didn't have to memorize all those. Believe it or not, you will know them before we finish. Okay, adding and subtracting binary. Now, I told you that I don't want you to do this, okay? If you're taking digital, you're going to learn how to do this, okay? I'm going to do one, one adding and one subtracting, but they tend to get a little difficult, so I really don't want, what I want you to focus on is the conversions, okay? Converting decimal, uh, Decimal to binary and binary back to decimal. What we've already done. Everybody okay? Um, actually, I'm not even going to do these. I'm just showing them to you. This would be the problems. One and one is two. Okay. In binary, a two is a one zero. So on this first one is all I'm going to work as part of it. So I would have a zero there. So that would be my one zero, and I would continue this until I got through with my carries, okay? And I, I could, we could work those, but, okay. Um, and it works reverse for subtracting. You would have to borrow those numbers. But this is not something we're going to test on. If you need it again, you will get it in part two if you want to take part two. And I'm definitely not getting into multiplying and dividing. Okay. In octal, we have eight allowable digits. Okay. It is a base eight numbering system. 
it's very rarely used anymore. I want to show it to you because this is kind of where PLCs came from, and I want you to know a little bit about Octal. Um, everything is weighted in eights. Uh, if I use the scenario that we did, the two raised to the zero, if I use eight raised to the zero, that is uh, eight raised to the zero power is one. 8 raised to the first power is the 8th place. 8 squared is 64. And now we'll have to get a calculator to tell you the next one. I think it's 1024. Or no, 512. I don't remember. 512. Okay, then the next one... Yeah, 4096. So we can go on from there and we can actually take a decimal number and subtract them out using this method. The problem is it's not on or off. It can go from 0 to 7. So I would have to multiply what's in the column by the weight of the column and then add it. Okay. It's not as easy to do that way. So I'm going to teach you an easier way to do this by using binary, okay? <clears throat> so I don't like the weighting factors of 8 because this just makes it a little difficult to work. Um, so we're going to look at binary to octal, which makes things a lot easier for me. Octal to binary. Uh, octal to decimal and decimal to octal. And basically when we do this, um, I'm going to go through binary to get to these two because the division, the book is going to show you how to do the multiplying by the weighted factors and the successive division. And if you want to do it that way, I have no problems with you doing it that way. I make mistakes when I do it that way. So I prefer to use binary as a crutch and do everything through binary just because it's easier. All right, here's your weighted columns for this, and we can do this by multiplying each one of these, 1's place, 8's, 64, 5, 12, 49, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'd have to take 5 times 40, 96, 2 times 5, 12, 3 times 64, 7 times 8, plus 4, and add all those together. That's all. That's a long bunch of numbers to do. So that's where I'm going to stop, right there. All right. Um, with octal, with octal, we get 0 to 7, right? Our next place is the 8th place. So if I were to count in octal, it would be 0, most people don't count to zero, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Ten in this class is not just ten. It doesn't mean the number after nine. It could mean the number after seven. For our purposes, it could be the number after one. Because in binary, we get zero, one, ten. Okay? So... Be very careful when you see a number like 10, which number, which which base is it? If, if you see a number 10 and it has nothing written and it's not in a column at the top that says octal, it is understood to be decimal. Everybody okay? So that, that means if I put a number out there, I've either got to put a 2 or an 8 or something as a subscript. Y'all know what a subscript is, right? A little number down at the bottom. If I can make it small enough. So it would look something like that. Now that's an octal 10. Okay? And some reason... I guess I need to go back and work on 
an octal number. Okay. <clears throat> if I have a number, I'm going to just blank the screen for a minute. Actually, no, it won't pick it up if I do. I'll come back to this. I just need a, an empty slide in here. Before we get into the next one, okay. All right, so if I have a number like, um, I don't know, we'll just make up one. How about, um, I forgot to turn on my pen. Okay, if I have a number like um, 275, base 8, okay, um, and in order to get that in octal, I mean, in order to get that in decimal, it's easier to go through binary, so what is a 5? In binary, one zero one three. You can't get a three or a two in binary. It's okay. I'm just making sure you know that. All right. So basically, an octal. If you look at a at your column weights for for binary, you have a 1, a 2, and a 4, right? And in binary, I only get to turn them on and off, right? Are y'all with me or not? Yes or no? Yes? All right. So I get 1, 2, and 4. What is, if I turned them all on, what is 4 plus 2 plus 1? 7. Okay. All right. So, how many digits am I allowed to have in octal? Zero to seven. So every three numbers in binary is equal to one octal digit. Who did I lose? Every three digits in binary is equal to one digit in octal. Who did I lose? Every three digits in binary is equal to one octal digit. If it's a seven, mm -hmm. it'd be one, one, one. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's this next number right here? So this is my five, right? One, two, and four. So what's a four plus a one? Five, that's how I got that. So what's my next digit? Seven? One, one. One. You got it. Next one's two, so what do you think it's going to be? You got it. Zero, one, zero. Not so difficult, is it? Yeah. 
You'll catch on, I promise. All right. All right. Everything, everything in binary is either on or off, right? All right. Octal, I only get from zero to seven. If you look, one, two, and four is three digits in binary, right? So if I add those, I get seven. So every three digits in binary equals one digit in octal. Yes, sir. Do what? No, it cannot be. There will never be an eight in octal. And I had to think about it because I almost wrote an eight while ago when I was doing it. And I had, no, nope, no. Nope. So it, you're right. The the highest you can get is a is a seven a digit one digit of seven. Cause in in uh, octal you get the ones place and then the eights place. So if I've got an eight, it's a one zero. It's not a it's not a eight. Yeah. The little eight subscript tells me that this is a base eight. None of these numbers better be more than seven. And while we're talking about it, that is a test question. I, I have a, a multiple choice, I believe, that says which of these numbers cannot be octal. And I think it's got a nine in it. Can't be octal if it's got a nine. Okay, now how would I get this? I've got this number as octal. Now this is my binary equivalent of this octal number. Y'all with me? Okay. How am I going to get this to a decimal number? Well, how did I bring binary numbers to decimal? Addition. So all I got to do is mark these columns, right? So I got the ones column, the two, the four. What's the next one? What's the next one? Do I need the one for the last one? No, because there's nothing there. Um, now, I am going to tell you, when you're doing this, don't accidentally forget, like on this one, and forget to write the 64, because what you'll end up doing is putting 64 over this one and mess your answer up. So be careful and go ahead and write it. Okay. This works well for that paper turned sideways. You can just put these one, two, four, eight all the way up there and then start plugging these numbers in. Okay, so then you don't have to write it every time. All right, so I have a 128, correct? I have no 64, correct? I have a 32, a 16, an 8, a 4, and a 1. I have no 2. No two. 189. Did anybody else do this? Did somebody else add it? So 189? Okay. So the decimal number for this octal number is 189. Everybody okay? I'm going to give you plenty of time to practice, I promise you. Matter of fact, I think there's a worksheet like this thick. I didn't say you had to do it all. I said you'd have plenty of time to practice. All right. Same thing, of course, if you're do taking a a uh, binary number back to octal. I'm going to go back to that binary number we worked out earlier. All right, so this is the binary number that we worked out earlier. Actually, I'll go back to the one not where you asked me where did I get that number. All right, so in this number, this was a binary number that we were given a while that in one of the earlier problems, okay? And I have no idea what this is. But how many digits 
in binary make up one octal digit? Three. So I'm going to start from the right, not from the left, the right of the number, okay? So one, two, and four, That I'm going to break that up into one group. You with me? One, two, three, I'm going to break that up into one group. The reason I'm going this way is because this one works out even. It may not. I may have to add zeros on the end to make it work. And if I'm going the other way, I've changed the number. Got to go this way. Everybody okay? All right. So looking at this first number over here, we know in decimal it's 314. In binary it's this. Okay. So let's figure out what it is in octal. I got zero, one, zero. That's a two. Everybody understand how that's a two? All right. One, 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 what is that? Okay, you can't use these numbers. Because I only get, oops, I could have used those. But I only get up to seven, right? So every one of these I have to pretend like it is a number in itself. One, two, four. One, two, four. One, two, four. Yes, sir. How is it true? No, how is it number two? How is zero, one, zero, eight? Okay, because four, two, one. All right, so this is the four's place, the two's place, and the one's place. I have no ones, right? Muhammad? This is the one's place. What's in it? Zero. Zero. So I have none. Okay. The two's place. One. It's on, so I have two. What about four? I got it. Okay. So now, everybody else, don't want your help. Sorry. Muhammad, look at this one. What's this one? One, two, and four. Okay, you get uh, seven. Seven. Okay. okay. So that's exactly how you do it. Everybody okay? Everybody understand how we did that? All right, what about on the last one? Four. Four. So this number might be 314 in decimal. It might be 1001111010 in binary. But in octal, it's 472. Do what? Yeah, with a subscript of 8. And I hated I'd made that circle because now it looks like 4702. But it's 472. Two in octal. Everybody okay? To me, that's much easier than trying to figure out how many eights and sixty fours and ten and and five twelves and forty ninety sixes. All right. Now I'm going way on back. Come on. Oops. I kind of went through. I put that slide in the wrong place. I'll move it around, but that's okay. Okay. So now we've we've got binary. Decimal and octal, okay? The reason we used octal in the first place is because if you have to punch in a number that is one zero 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 one one zero 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 one zero one zero one zero, and you've got to punch that in and you get to see two digits at a time. What happens if somebody talks to you in the middle of you punching that in? Okay, that GE Series 1 up there, programmed in hex, and you got to see two digits at a time. And there were more times than I can tell you that one that my lab partner would say, hey, did you account for? And then I'd have to start all over again. Okay, and that was in hex. So imagine having to do that in binary, and now the number's huge. Octal made it 
where those numbers went from, y'all saw how long that binary number was, down to three or four digits. Made it much easier to program. And that's why we did it. As our programs got larger, though, Octal wasn't even big, wasn't even small enough to handle. So we went to hex, okay? You may have to do one or two octal numbers on the test. Hex is important, okay? Uh, octal, not so much anymore. Hex is really important, okay? Um, hexadecimal, hex means six. Decimal is 10. Six plus 10 is 16, just so you know. So hexadecimal is a base 16 numbering system. Uh, Every digit can have 16 combinations, 0 through F. So that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And guess what happens whenever I pass F? I do for that digit, but what happens to the next one? It's I'm going to count for you to 20, okay? Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I'm actually past 20, 19, and 19 doesn't go back to 2-0. 19 goes to 1-A, 1-B, 1-C, 1-D, 1-E, 1-F, and now 2-0. Okay, so when you passed F, you went to 1-0. correct. When I passed F, I went to 1-0. And then when I went past 1-F, I went to 2-0. And when I get past 2-F, guess what I go to? 3-0. Everybody okay? Just remember, just like with decimal, when you finish out that column as far as it goes, I have to carry to the next column. This particular set just carries to 15. I mean, we, it runs up to 15 before we get a carry. Everybody okay? Um, in intro to engineering, we call it a reset and a carry. So a reset to zero, a carry is adding one to the next column. So you got a reset and a carry. Everybody okay? All right. So each digit holds the weight of that column in a in a sixteen powers of sixteen. So my first column. If I were going to do this the, going straight from decimal to hex, and I never do this because just like the other ones, I always get myself confused. I'm going to have 16 to the zero power. Guess what that is? That's going to be the ones place. I'm going to have 16 raised to the first power, which is the 16s place. I'm going to have 16 squared which is 256. I'm going to have 16 cubed on the next one, which is going to be 4096. All right. And those are large enough numbers in themselves. Everybody agree? But just think now that I can actually have up to 15 in each one of these. So 15, I can, in the second column right there, if I have F0, okay, I've got 15 times 16, which is, if I remember correctly, 240. I'm not sure, but what's 15 times 16? Okay, 15 times 16 is 240. So if I had nothing but, oops, 
F0 in decimal, that is a 240. So I've got, you would have to take these numbers and multiply them times the place and then add them. The numbers get too big for me. I make mistakes. So I don't like doing that either. So I go through binary. Okay. Uh, here's a number that we could do. <clears throat> uh, A, 9, C, B, 4. And instead of having a 16 down at the bottom, you usually will see an H. You may see a 16. But a lot of times you'll see an H for hex. But either one works. Everybody okay? As your subscript? All right. You kind of know this is a hexadecimal number because how many A's do you have in decimal? <laughs> so that this one's pretty self-explanatory, okay? Um, 16 raised to the fourth power is... I think it's 65,536, okay? And then I've got to multiply that by 10, and then I've got to add 9 times 496, okay? So I'm not going there. If you, if you want to do it that way, more power to you, okay? But going back to what we used a few minutes ago with the octal, Okay, my binary columns are a 1, a 2, a 4, an 8, and my next one is a 16, right? Y'all with me? Well, 16 is more than 15, isn't it? So what's an 8 plus a 4 plus a 2 plus a 1? 15. So guess what? Every four digits in binary becomes one hex digit. Not so hard now that you figured it out in octal, is it? So now we're just going to break this up into fours. Instead of threes, we're using fours. So what I would probably do to convert this number is I would make each one of these into its own binary number, okay? I've got to use four digits for each one. Everybody understand that? Even if it ends with zero, you have to put it in here because it will make your number wrong if you don't, okay? It would be like you carrying... A thousand and one dollars to the bank, and they just got rid of the zeros in the middle and deposited eleven dollars. Would you be happy? No. So I'm I'm not gonna be happy if you mess my numbers up either. Okay. And your grade your grade will be the deposit that reflects it. How about that? Okay. All right. So what would a four be? And what would a binary four be using four digits? Right, zero, one, zero, zero. Everybody okay? Got to use four digits because we're doing hex. Everybody okay? Yes or no? I'm hearing about three or four of the same people. Yes or no? I know it's late. Okay. All right, how about a B? Any idea what a B is? Well, 10's an A, right? So it, 11 is a B. So, yes. It'll be an 8, no 4, and a 2 and a 1. 0, a 1, 0, 1, 1. A C is a 12. There you go. One one zero zero. This thing's hard to write on, so my numbers aren't don't look like ones. I'm sorry. All right, how about a nine? One zero zero one. There you go. 
And what's an A? 10, 10, right? 1, 0, 1, 0. 10, 10. Ren, 10, 10. There you go. All right. Now I would have to come in here and write each one of these columns out to find out what my binary number is. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. 256, 512, 10, 24, 20, 48, 40, 96, 81, 92, 16, 384, that's it, 32, 7, what, 68, what, 32768, yeah, that's right, sorry, 65, you must have a chart, 65, because you're doing it too fast, 65 what, 536, then what, 131, zero, repeat it again, One. 131072. Okay. And the next one is 262144. All right. And the last one? Okay. 524288. 288. Now I can add all those. That's still got to be a big number. But. So now all you'd have to do, we're not going to do it, but all you'd have to do now is add each one of these where there are ones. Most of the numbers we do won't be quite this large. Okay. Everybody okay? But you could add these, and it's still much easier than trying to multiply uh, 16 times, or, um, what did we decide that last column was? Yeah, 65, 536 times 10, and then adding, um, 512 times 9, and so on. Going, going from hex back to decimal is not quite as difficult using this method or using the other method as it is when you're trying to go the other way. Um, let's go back to this number, the 275. And I'm going to take this number now and then we're going to do the octal, I mean do the hex number for it. We've got so one zero the number is zero one zero one 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 zero one. Everybody okay? So what I would do to find the hex number for this one is I would come in and one, two, three, four, break it up in groups of four. Everybody okay? One, two, three, four. My last one's a zero, so I don't even have to bother with it. If it were a one, I'd have to add three more zeros. Y'all okay? So what is 1011? Now we don't use these column weights anymore. We use 1, 2, 4, and 8 every time. So I have an 8, no 4, a 2, and a 1. What is that? It's what? 11, but not in binary, and not in hex, it's not. What's an 11? B. I'm okay with you telling me 11. I wanted you to. So that's fine. All right. So I got a B. And now I got an 8, a 4, and a 1, which is 13. And what's a 13? So my answer um, is 189 in decimal, right? 275 in octal, and BD in hex. And while we're on this and we're looking at all of them, notice that the hex only has two digits. Okay? Notice that the octal number is the largest. 
I mean, it's the biggest number. And they're all equal, I know that. But, I mean, looking at it, 275, if these were all the same, 275 would be bigger than 189, right? It would also be bigger than a two-digit BD. So the smaller, the smaller the numbering system base, the larger the number to get to get to the same thing. Y'all okay? Better look and see what time it is. Okay, these are the decimal equivalents to the binary, and my F is off the board down there on the bottom. I'm sorry, but that's just happened. Uh, we counted earlier, so you kind of know what these are, right? Um, up through 9, they're all the same. Decimal numbers then get a reset and a carry, which is a 1, 0, right? But, oct but hex goes on. These are the binary equivalents for uh, through E. My F got cut off. Sorry. So these are the four-digit binary code, binary uh, equivalents for those hex numbers. Okay. Uh, this is what it tells you how to do this in writing, but we've been doing it, so I'm just kind of skipping over it. Um, this is a numbering system comparison chart for decimal, binary, octal, hex, and BCD, but I haven't taught you BCD, so for now, just ignore it. But notice your decimal number, let's just say 14. I'll pick 14. 14, one four in decimal, 1110 in binary, 16 in octal. E in hex, and E in hex. Everybody okay? Uh, we've already done this, but basically if we're going to convert binary to hexadecimal, we take the um, binary number, in those four digits, figure out what those four digit equivalents are. So zero one zero would be five. One one zero zero would be C. We've been doing these, so I'm not doing addition and subtraction. Okay. Binary coded decimal is a code. It is not a numbering system. It is decimal. Okay. Um it is always four groups of four digits, just like hex. The difference is, what is decimal? A base 10 numbering system. Everybody okay? So because it's a base 10 numbering system, I cannot have numbers more than nine. What's the highest digit I get in decimal? Nine. This is decimal. I just write it in a binary code. So if I were to take the decimal number, somebody give me a decimal number, two digits, 18. That's the first one I heard. All right. What would a one be in the four-digit binary? Zero, 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 one. Everybody okay? What would an eight be in a four digit binary code? This is a palindrome. Anybody know what a palindrome is? Same forward as it is backwards. Somehow we ended up with a palindrome. Okay, but this would be, this would be the BCD, because all I did was take a binary or take the decimal number and make it a binary code. 
So the one became zero 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 one. The eight became one zero zero zero. Everybody okay? Yes or no? Henry, you look confused. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's say let's say we got another number. Let's do thirty five. Okay. Just because it's a different number. All right. Thirty five. This is a decimal number. All I want to do is convert it to binary. So I'm going to convert the three, and then I'm going to convert the five. So what is the three in decimal? Four digits. Do you understand that? Um, well, then you should have asked long before now. <laughs> four, two, oh, I'm sorry, eight, four, two, one. See that? All right. That is the weights of your column. So if I'm working on a three, can I, do I, can I turn on the eight? No, because that's bigger than three, right? Can I turn on the four? No. How about two? Can I do one? So two plus one is three. So that's how I come out with that for a three. On, on four, four for binary, yes. And it works for BCD and it also works for hex. Now, uh, Octal only uses the 421. I don't know. Primary don't matter. I just wrote this number down. It, whether it's primary or not, has no, uh, prime numbers has no relevance. It just happened that I wrote them that way. All right, so I got a three, and now what would be the five? Nobody else answer. What would be the five? So I got to have a four-digit code for a five. So what's five? Eight four two one. Can I get a four out of five? Yeah. yeah. So that'd be a one. Now I've only got. Well, now let me show you. I got five, right? And I subtract a four. So what do I have left? So I can't do the two. Yeah. That's correct. All right. Now, going back to what we were discussing earlier. When Henry said, can you have a 7 and an octal number? In BCD, I cannot have a number that's that's 1-1 one, one something. I can't have a 101 because what is 8 plus 2? It is not a legal decimal number. Y'all with me? So only 1 to 9. So now going back to my chart. Okay. Uh, 11. Let's just look at 11. So here's 11 in decimal, 1011 in binary, right? 13 in octal, a B in hex, a 1 and a 1 in BCD. So basically, <laughs> everything has to be one of these. I can have multiple groups of these <clears throat> but every one of them have to be those so that decimal 10 you convert that to binary that's correct so you got to turn on the 8 right yes and on which one on 10 uh-huh so it will be 1 right and 0 now are you tell me when i'm converting this to binary or when I'm converting it to BCD. Okay. No, because that would be 11. This would be 8, no 4s, plus a 2. Uh, another way to Another little thing that just to point out, if a binary number ends, the very far right digit is a 1, it's odd. 
If it's a zero, it's even. And that's the only digit that changes from even to odd. Because that's the only way I can get an odd number is add a one. Everything else is even. Because it's multiples of two. How are you going to get... How are you going to get uh, an odd number if all I get to do is multiply by 2? Okay. So that 1's place is the only thing that gives me an odd. Everybody okay? All right. <clears throat> the next code. Uh, I believe, yes. I'll have to look for it for you. Could. Uh, there's a hex binary decimal chart on page 59. Then there's an octo binary decimal chart at the bottom of that page. BCD is on page 60. It's not a full chart. Uh, I, you'll have one out on Blackboard, though, that you can print out if you want it. Oh, let's see. No. But, no, there's not a full, there's not a chart with every one of them on there like mine. Okay, the next thing we need to do is cover gray code. There are only a few things that I want you to know about gray code. I do not want you to memorize all the gray codes, okay? In your lab book, it asks you for gray codes. Um, and you can get your answers from the chart on page 62. So you can do those in the lab. Um, but I am not going to ask you what is 7 in gray code. Notice that on the chart, on page 62, that the gray code and the binary are very rarely the same. The things I want you to know about gray code is, one, that gray code changes one bit at a time. It is a code. It is not a numbering system. So it's not very easy to figure out on the fly. So that's one disadvantage. Another one is... It's very difficult to do math functions because you can only change one digit at a time. Um, if if I give you a number like one zero zero one and tell you that that is nine, you know that that is a binary nine, right? If I give you a number like 1101 and tell you that that is a 9, this is how you're going to know. If it is not binary, it's gray code. Okay, because that is a test question too. I give you one that is definitely not the binary. So if it's not the binary, it's gray code. Yeah, if 1101 equals 9, and that's a fact, I'm telling you, a fact, it equals 9. It's not binary, right? So it's gray code. Um, I can show you using a four-digit code, but if I get much past the four-digit code, I can't do them. Um. When we get into uh, one of the charts that we do later on, which is um, um, 
Karnoff's maps, uh, we will use gray code for two digits. So it, and it two digits is real easy. Um, I'm gonna. Okay. Okay. So here's the, a comparison just between binary, decimal, BCD, and gray code. And I go down to 15. And gray code 15 is 1000. So it's the same as an 8 in binary. So that's the last four digit combination you can do by doing it one bit at a time is 1000. All right, the next section is ASCII, A-S-C-I-I. -I. It stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Do y'all know how many languages your computer speaks? No, sir, it does not. You are correct. It's one. And it is machine language. And do you know what machine language is? Machine language is binary. So your computer only speaks in binary. ASCII is an interpretation of that binary that changes the binary code into alphabets and numbers. So when you type something on your keyboard, you think you are typing a S C I I. You are not. You are typing a binary code to tell the computer to put up A C A S C I I. Okay. Those binary codes are in a chart, and I'm not even sure if it's in this version of the book. It was in the first version. Yes, sir. It is a code used for alphabets. It is an alpha. It, it's a. Um, it, it is a, a code that represents letters and numbers, so that. There you go. <clears throat> no, no, no. I understand what you're saying. No, it is. It, it works more like a map. You have certain sections, and you have to pick one from here and one from here, and it goes to the A or the B or the C. It doesn't have like A is, well, yeah, it does, too. It, 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 but it's, it's not in like 0, 1, 1, 1. It's eight digits as opposed to four. <clears throat> So it's a byte as a, it's a, it's a eight digits instead of a binary digit or four bit four digits. But I do not see that in this. Uh, here it is. The chart in the book. I'll print out my chart and bring it over here Wednesday and show it to you, okay? But we'll, we'll look at ASCII again. It's actually in this book, but the way they have it, it would not be something easy for you to decode. So I'll bring you a, 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 an, an easier way to decode it. But it works in, in seven actual bits, so it, so it would actually have seven digits in binary. Um, but it actually is sent from the from the computer to the or the keyboard to the computer so that it knows what you're typing. <clears throat> and this is my chart. Okay, good. So I did put mine in here. So I'll make you a copy of this. But like, if you wanted to type the A for ASCII, here's your A. Okay. So it would be a four. One, so that would be my hex number for that. So it would be in binary. It would be zero one zero zero 
zero zero zero one. Right? So four one. The top, notice it's MSD, that means most significant digit. So that's the largest of the two, the, the, the one to the left. So this would be your first digit across the top and your second digit down the bottom. So if I'm going to type a, uh, and sign, which is right here, it would be two, six in hex. So then you can convert that to binary. Everybody okay? No? Um, an at symbol is, uh, everybody uses that for their email, right? So an at symbol is right here. So your largest number would be four. So if I typed an at symbol on my keyboard, the computer would see four zero. Uh, not really. It is really a hex number. It's just the last digit's always a zero. Uh, the last digit is actually what we call parity. And it, and you set up the two things, the one you're sending from and the one you're sending to, uh, you set them up for the same, even or odd. Okay. And because you're only using the first seven digits. That last digit, if you set it up even, then then you make all your ones even, e either even or odd. So if you've got, uh, like in the four zero, four is zero one zero zero, and then of course zero 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 zero. So I have one one one, right? One thing that's on. If I'm set for even parity, then that eighth bit would have to be a one, so that now I'd have two, and that I'd have an even number of one. And that's a lot more information than you ever wanted to know, ain't it? It's what you get for asking a computer person. <laughs> but anyway, so that's that's what that last digit is reserved for. But it. So it's basically really an eight-digit number. It's just that last one is not used to figure out the character. All right. So here's a, an example. If I were going to spell out the word computer, I use a capital C. And notice they use an odd parity. So I guess it's a good thing I explained that, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> I'm using odd parity, so that means I've got to have an odd number of ones everywhere I am. This one doesn't count. So if I went to that chart and looked up a C, it would be 100011 zero, 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 one, one for a capital C. And then a lowercase o, 11011111. One, one, zero, one, 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 one. You okay? So this is how I do all these numbers, and I would find each one of these. There is an assignment, by the way, where you have to write out your first name and then you have to decode it in ASCII. And I'll find that and make sure I get it to you. Um, I had it in one of my computer classes, but it's kind of an interesting thing to do. All right, and then the parity bit here is the seventh digit. So all I've got to do, it's, it's, so, it's so simple that people forget how to do it because they think it's got to be harder than that. But it's not. You just count up the number of ones. So if I'm in odd parity, that means every time I've got every row or every letter, I've got to have an odd number of ones. One, two, three. Is that odd? So I put a zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that odd? No. I make it odd. I put a one. One, two, three, four, five. Is that odd? Yes. I put a zero. One, two, three. Is that odd? Put a zero. One, two, three, four, five. Odd. One, two, three, four. It's even. I gotta add one. One, two, three, four. It's even. I gotta add one. One, two, three, four. Even. I gotta add one. 
<clears throat> so it's real simple. But what happens is because of the charges of the capacitor, for those of you that are electronics folks, which most of you are, um, just in case I have a bad capacitor that charges up wrong, my parity bit would be wrong, and then the computer would know we have a problem. All right. A um, couple of things we did not cover in this chapter that we need to, and I guess I'll just hit them right here while we're at the end. I'm off a of pause, yeah. <clears throat> we talked about ASCII. You know what a base number is, right? Okay. You know what BCD is? You know what binary is? Um, we didn't really talk about a bit, and that is not something you put in a horse's mouth to guide him. A bit is a single binary digit. So a bit is a single binary digit. It is defined in this chapter somewhere. Or it used to be. Well, it's in the review questions if it's not anywhere else. They put a whole lot more addition and subtraction in here. Okay, a byte is eight bits. One byte is eight bits. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because when you're transferring, <clears throat> you're, it, it's, it's slower to transfer like that, so everything's in bits. You have to transfer one digit at a time. When you're storing, you need lots of space. Programs are large. So if they if they gave it to you in bits per second, you'd have to take that number that you have and multiply that by eight. So it would look like it was massive, even though it really wasn't. Um, think about a gigabyte. What if they went back and instead of giving it to you in gigabytes, they actually wrote out how many bits you had? Yeah, and Every gig, what's even worse is every gigabyte, uh, or every, yeah, every thousand bytes, so every kilobyte, I guess, is 1024. It's not really a thousand because of the binary. You are right. So, um, it would be 1024 times 1024 times 1024. So then that really messes people up. So that's why they just started doing it in large groups of numbers and trying to keep it very small. Uh, but you have to have a lot of storage and, and transferring is fairly slow. So the transfer happens every bit. Right, on, on that particular transmission. Now, like a parallel transmission, you can do those in bytes. When you, if, when you buy a printer or whatever, a printer usually has... Uh, a byte rating as opposed to a bit rating because those cables do eight eight bits at a time. Right, that's correct. So they they actually will do basically eight bytes at a time. I'm sorry, eight eight bits at a time, one byte. Yes. Yeah, it is. It, space is actually a byte. Also, I have to go back and find it on that chart. But it it actually has a a designator for a space. A space is not just a blank. 
And it may be zero 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 zero, but it is a space. All right, I'm gonna skip double word for a minute. A word is actually sixteen sixteen bits. A word is two bytes or sixteen bits. Yeah. If it if it says not not any Word means how many bits. Uh, in this reference, it don't mean like any English language word. It's it's a it's a computer word is classified as sixteen bits. Okay. A double word is thirty two. So guess what a quad word is? And that's not even on my list, but a quad word sixty four. Now, guess what a nibble is? It's a half a byte or four bits. They do. A nibble. N-I-B-B-L-E. N-I-B-B-L-E. That's right. If you look on in your review questions, let's see, page 65, um, in my book, I don't know what it is in yours, but look somewhere around there. Is it 65? Does your question number one have A through E and it tells you to, what's the maximum decimal number? Is that yours? All right. If you notice, it's got... Four bits called a nibble. See that? So that's the only place I found them. The old book actually had had a whole listing of what these were. And I don't know if this one does and I've just missed it. But I swear I've been through this chapter three times and I don't see it. So if y'all I see bit listed but I don't see anything else after bit so so it looks like to me they left a lot of stuff out of this chapter but that's okay So if in y'all's book you find bit and bite and nibble and word, let me know and I'll make sure I note it because it's not in this version. But I've got version two, not or edition two, not three. Okay. Well, in the only place I've seen the um the nibble and the bite and the word was over here on page 63 where it asks you this question and then says what's the maximum all right so this is the chapter and now guess what i get to give you some new some more questions to do Um, you can do one if you want to. I'm, I don't care for one. You don't have to give me one. So I would like for you to do two. 65. I'd like for you to do three. Eight. Nine, ten, twelve, and fourteen. And I'll get in, and uh, I'll get you a chart for for you to use that. 